Good evening everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I'm going to be going through another weekly watch list. Um, of course last week I did not make one and that is purely because there just wasn't enough in the market, enough setups. Um, obviously with the um, COVID-19 we have to be very careful uh, with what's going on and obviously in the markets we have to be very sensible because of course it's a tough time um, for the economies across the world um, and obviously this is showing the markets as well. Um, so for myself I only had to think about four pairs on my watch list um, and the only trade I did take was USD JPY which is shown here um, and of course this sort of is running at um, around 550 pips at market close on Friday night um, I've removed most of my profits and I'm aiming um, up here you'll see two fibs here so the original fib being this left one on the right is just another formation of the ABCD formation um, which I'll be making a video on this week so make sure to look out for that um, and turn that bell notification on to make sure you don't miss that um, so I'm looking for sort of this 112 level um, and slightly higher potentially um, long term but I say um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to start off as always with the indicators that we like to use the DXY gold and then oil so going on to the weekly with DXY we can see that we've had a very very um, impulsive week um, so you can see that we've had this um, bearish sort of move through the weekly 15 mate and then we had the fake out and then since then this week we've had a massive impulsive candle to the upside creating a new major high of 103.00 um, of course that's significant because of this week we've gone from 97 roughly to 103 um, so a massive move there which we've of course seen on the USD parents um, for example why my USD JPY is running so well um, so now if we just go into the daily we can just see that Price has obviously pushed up and you can see sort of in the last week we've only had sort of one um, or two bearish candles if you include Friday's one. Um, so obviously a very, very impulsive week to the upside and now we're probably going to be looking for some correction. Um, which of course as we know um, when these sort of markets happen we see these really impulsive moves sometimes we'll get correction and sometimes we may not so if we just go into the four hour what you'll see is we are forming some lows and um, high highs high lows so on the sort of four hour this is we can just see this formation um, and then we can see we do have near current prices potentially a double top formation we have some liquidity here so if we drop down to the one hour and look on the closer period we can just see that we can plot this fib from the last um, higher low um, to the higher high um, and then we've got sort of this 23.6 Fibonacci with um, the hourly 50 in May and then of course the liquidity area we marked out before so potentially looking for sort of a little bit more correction and then potentially going along um, as well obviously say so long um, obviously see the balls come in the DXY and then dollar pairs become bullish again um, so potentially reverse it from this area or we might even come down to the trend line in the 38.2 uh, the next one we're going to look at is of course US oil so of course this is a pairing that um, has brought me um, a nice bit of luck lately of course a 1300 pip um, trade that was given out on my Instagram, um, YouTube and of course on the IGTV um, Facebook that I posted um, so obviously a really nice trade so if we just look on the weekly we can see that we've got this new major low not quite an all time low, the all time low I think is around sort of 9 yeah, dollars seventy-one a barrel so that new major low at sort of 19.99 level and um, we have sort of some liquidity here at the last major low as well so if we just go on to the daily we can see that um, we are sort of if I just so yeah just on this um, daily you can see that we are just slowly um, seeing some correction um, obviously last week was uh, sorry two weeks ago was quite bullish and um, of course it's expected with such a high impulsive move to the downside and then we've seen a bearish week last week um, so now sort of if we jump down to the four hour we can just see that there is a wedge formation or this triangle formation um, forming so we can see sort of um, obviously the high here then a lower high lower low lower high lower low um, or sorry in this case a higher low so obviously this is where we're seeing that descending and then the ascending here causing this wedge um, I'm looking for sort of a breakout to the downside of the area we're currently in um, so of course in that 4 hour we can just see we've sort of reversed with the 50 fib which is um, also in line with the 4 hour 50 May I'm looking for sort of a breakthrough a retest of the trend line or this liquidity area um, and then potentially I believe one of the fib levels as well um, of course we'd make a new fib if we did break out um, and then we'd be looking for sort of this minus 27% fib at the 15.54 level so for me i'm probably looking to be bearish in oil this week however um of course we have to be careful with commodities like oil and we'll just wait and see if there is any reaction to sort of the news we had a couple weeks ago about saudi arabia raising supply of oil next we're going to go to gold um so this was another one i've been looking at the last few weeks um and i did take a uh, position like last week i got taken out before um 
the move ended up going in my favour. Um, so sort of continuing from where I was looking last week, um, just looking for sort of as we made this new high, um, just looking for the price to come down to sort of interact with one of these 50% of 61.8, currently interacting with the 50%, um, which is also in line with the weekly 50 EMA. Um, and then of course, if we come kind of a little bit lower, potentially to the trend line, and then I'll be looking to take this long up to um, sort of the 1705.505 previous level or last major high and then potentially the minus 27. Um, however, um, what we may see is we may see price sort of break this weekly 50 MA and if it does break the weekly 50 MA, then of course we may be looking at seeing gold go even lower. Um, so sort of just got to be aware of both situations. Of course, as the US dollar gets stronger, um, we'll see um, people or investors come away from these safe havens. Um, so then if we go down to the daily, we can just see the price um, it is being very very wicky so there's quite a lot of liquidity in the market at the moment um of course liquidity being the fact that we've got these sort of massive um candlesticks and wicks which is no surprise as obviously gold is one of our most important commodities um so if we just go into the four hour we can just see we have sort of got this triangle formation forming one touch two touch at the bottom of course three touches to confirm a trend and then one touch two touch here as well um and just looks very corrective at the moment so potentially going to get that breakout to the upside um and if we just go on the one hour we can just see we are sort of breaking above that one hour 50 um, so then now we're just going to sort of start off with the watch list. Um, so if we just go on to the Australian dollar CAD parent, if we go into the weekly, we can just see um, how we're looking at the price to go this week. Um, of course, Australian dollar CAD is normally a pair I like to look at just purely because of Australian dollar um, always provides some good luck with me um, along with the New Zealand dollar, of course, in their sort of correlation. And then the Canadian dollar um, is also one of my favorite pairs as well. Um, so as you can see in the weekly, we've had a sort of really bearish last two weeks. Of course, now you can see the price has um, closed below that new low and therefore creating a new low at around 0.80684. What's important is when you plot these levels on the lower time frames, you sort of adjust them slightly. Um, so it won't be exactly that, but you'll see as we go on the lower time frames, it'll become more accurate. Um, so obviously price did close below this and make a new low. However, we did form a large wick, which tells us there is some liquidity there and potentially the balls may be coming back into the market or it could just be a corrective phase. Let's go on to the daily. We can just see, um, so going to the daily, we can just see the price did sort of come down for sort of fake out of this um, upside of the channel and to the downside and we've had a retest and price is looking to go lower. Um, but it's quite wicky at the moment, so just be careful. Going to the four hour, we can just see the price um, is sitting within this area um, here. So we can just see liquidity is here, second touch of the trend line. I'm looking for price probably to break through this um, as it does it quite corrective, retest liquidity area and then come down to the downside and then equaling that new major low or going potentially lower. Um, and then if we go on to the one hour, we can just see a little bit clearly. Um, we've obviously got this price action below the one hour 50 MA as well. And we've seen this sort of double top um, off of this level here and the previous high, or sorry, previous low. Um, so now if we just jump on to the next pair, we're going to look at the Australian dollar against the Japanese yen. So as we can see here, we was in this channel, broke out, another corrective channel, broke out, and it's been quite impulsive since that point. Uh, we did get a slight close below the last major low. Um, however, it's sort of unconvincing because we've only just broken below. However, we could just be seeing some correction, but we did make a new major low at around the level of 59.87. So going down to the daily, we can just see marking out the last high to the low we can just see sort of this corrective area here where we are seeing some rejections so this is the daily fibonacci for 50 percent as shown here we've got the four hour 50 ma um which we can see here um it's just sitting on this price level here and then the daily um time frame showing this liquidity coming into the market here which we are seeing the wicks um coming in already so i'm looking at shorts on this um but of course at market open we might see some gaps so we just have to be careful but this is what i'm sort of focusing on um and i'm still expecting obviously news creates volatility utility um, but um, of course we're looking at price to make the direction um, it doesn't change the direction so if we now look on to the four hours we did before we can just see sort of prices getting that curve in reversal and the potential to the downside and then on the one hour and um, we are sort of sitting above the one hour 50 in may but price is looking quite impulsive to break through um, so we'll see how that goes this week now going on to Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, um, a pair that I've never normally traded, but the last few weeks has caught my attention. Um, so obviously price has tested the weekly 50 MA and then formed an impulsive bearish engulfing. Um, that's what we saw last week. And now we've sort of seen this massive wick to the downside, which we've seen on a couple of Australian dollar pairs now. Um, we'll see the all-time low is 1.00220 um, and price couldn't maintain that. Um, but of course with this bearish engulfing and then we saw the price come down this week, we are anticipating sort of probably some more um, downside potential. Going to the daily, we can just see there is a trend line that's formed here um, 
So what we're looking for is price to sort of retrace to the 38.2 um, and then we're looking to sort of price to reverse from this level um, and then sort of maintain this bearish momentum down to sort of the minus 27% which is a 0 0.98440. Um, so just going to the 4 hour we can just see um, how price is all stalling at that 4, uh, at that four hour 50 MA um, and just see how we've got sort of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 week rejections in a row um, and can't break out that 4 hour 50 MA so potentially we can see this come down, retest the liquidity area and then come down to that minus 27% FIB as we discussed before um, and just obviously on the hourly we can just see that sort of even more wicks um, and obviously a fake out here of that level. Um, so now next pair we're going to look at is your Australian dollar US dollar. Um, of course these are all sort of Australian dollar based pairs we've started with. Um, what I must say is obviously when I do my analysis I do all the major pairs, um, all eight of them and then against obviously against each other or one another um, and obviously if there is sort of multiple pair, uh, a pair that I'm looking at in multiple trades then obviously I wouldn't be looking to take all of them, I'd be looking to take one but they've all caught my eye and I'm looking for that highest probability move. Um, so obviously I'm Australian dollar, US dollar, we can see um, price has been in this downtrend for a while. We had the fake out, and in the last two weeks, we've seen a massive impulsive move to the downside, creating this new major low at 0 0.55066. Um, onto the daily, we can just see how price is being um, very sort of liquid at the moment, and obviously, this spinning top that we had on Thursday, so Friday potentially giving us. Um, Friday giving us potentially um, sort, of, sort of direction maybe that we're going to get a sort of bullish movement however with the price currently the way it is enclosed um, it's not sort of convincing to either side so we've just got to monitor this one but onto the 4 hour we can see that if we do apply our Fibonacci from the last major high which broke uh, which is before the break of the trend line and then zero down here we can just see that price is on that 38.2 and um, if I just zoom out slightly and then we're looking for this to make a new major low at the 0 0.51875 and potentially um, sort of start to equal that new low and you can see that all time low is 0 0.47742 and that's exactly in line with our minus 61.8 so technicals lining up beautifully there um, and then going on to the Canadian dollar Swiss franc another pair that I do like to trade um, when we get the right um, price action so of course looking at this we can see that price action has given us these massive weeks to the downside also known as tweezer top formation um, so obviously uh, sorry tweezer bottom formation um, so obviously it's tweezer bottom rejection last on the last major low price is pushed up we're not seeing this come any lower um, so of course maybe we are going to start seeing some strength in the CAD which would go with some of the other pairs we looked at um, obviously with Australian dollar CAD shorts for example so now if we just go on to the one day um, time frame we can just see how price is obviously massively below that daily 50 MA so maybe we're going to get um, some retracement so if we just go into the 4 hour we can just see um, however we have broken above that 4 hour 50 MA um, which obviously as we said um, we're looking for the price to sort of now break out and come to the upside with the Canadian dollar looking to strengthen um, as we'll see in some other pairs as well so maybe we've retraced 4 hour 50 MA 23.6 FIB um, it looks nice to sort of look to go long um, depending on how market opens um, so now we're going to go to Canadian dollar, uh, Japanese yen, so another CAD pair, and um, we can see the wedge formation that we was in, we broke out of this, uh, but now again, like we had before, we've got this double tweezer bottom formation, so the same again, we're looking for maybe um, price to sort of come back up, you can see this daily um, trend line, um, which is clear on the 4 hour, so we jump on the 4 hour, you can see that price has now broken out that trend line, it's above the 4 hour 50 MA, um, and sort of sitting on that 23.6 liquidity area as well, so both pairs in the CAD Swiss and CAD Yen looking very similar, very similar setup, so therefore we don't look to take one of them pairings, um, and obviously with the Yen being a safe haven, probably, uh, but however obviously the Swiss being quite a safe um, pair, normally, that's normally a safe currency as well, we have to be careful. Um, so now if we just look onto the one hour we can just see um, sort of these rejections to this level um, and prices looking sort of head um, above maybe it might come down a little bit lower to the one hour 50 may but I quite like that four hour 50 may is just sitting below price um, so now the next pair we're going to look at is euro Australian dollar massively overextended last week and um, you can see sort of the drop that we had um, in sort of or sorry the massive impulse we had to the upside and then this sort of could not maintain the momentum although breaking above that previous major height so of course um from 1.98 to 1.87 uh, 1.81 that's a 1700 pip drop um 
obviously sorry 1.84 so sort of a 1400 pip drop so a massive move um, of course the Australian dollar normally giving us some big moves Euro Australian dollar and GBP AUD which is the pound Australian dollar normally providing um, some massive moves um, within sort of days or weeks um, so obviously going on to the one day we can just see sort of the correction um, of course after big impulse we're not really expecting it to reverse too much um, so maybe we'll get this correction a bit of a trend line that's formed um, and then of course what we're looking for is this 50% rejection which we've got obviously the daily 50 may is still much below price but if we go into the 4 hour we can see that we are just rejecting that 4 hour 50 MA quite nicely so potentially they're going to go uh, make some new highs at the minus 27% um, of course with the coronavirus sort of making a lot more news within Europe this week. I know Germany's been affected um, a lot over this weekend because of it. And of course, we know about the UK. Um, they might see some weakness in the Euro as well, um, due to obviously Germany being one of the massive um, powerhouses within the Eurozone. And of course, just on the hour, uh, we can see that price did sort of try and break the 1 hour 50 in May, but didn't quite um, break through. But we'll probably see that price will break through in the coming days. Um, and then the next pair we're going to look at is EuroCAD. Um, so CAD pair again. Um, I do really like sort of the CAD pair as I said. Uh, CAD currency, sorry. Um, obviously trend line broke the trend line really impulsively. Then we gapped above. We've now filled that gap with a nice um, sort of wick. So therefore the gap's filled. We can look at price again and potentially going to look to go long from here. So if we look at the daily, we can just see obviously that most recent high has been broken. The new major high up here. Um, Sorry, so obviously price can maintain that momentum, so closing below the previous high with that double uh, tweezer top rejection. Um, so obviously on the daily we can see um, how price has come down. So what we're looking for is price to sort of reject this 38.2, which it looks to be doing, retesting that major high, retesting that gap, or filling that gap, 38.2% fib and liquidity area. It's quite a nice sort of few confluences to take this long. Um, of course, on the four hour as well, we can see we are below the four hours, so that's the only thing. And obviously, looking at the possible versus the probable, we have also got this trend line here that we have broken um, through. So maybe looking for a retracement, so plotting a fib from the high to the low, maybe we're going to get um slight bit of correction and then potentially could look to take this short so that's why it's important to look at both possibilities within the market and of course with the massive wick to the upside maybe there isn't enough pressure so maybe just look at the probable best possible and take either outcome um, whatever one seems to play out the best or look at other pairs like we discussed before um, so now going back to the euro usd parent of course dxy we discussed before so we can see prices break out of the channel um, so now we're looking for that retest and the most important part of this guys is looking at the monthly we can see that we are currently breaking through this monthly wedge quickly we have broke through um, so just obviously be aware of that um, and then going on to the daily we can see that we're looking for a sort of a small correction um, obviously we did see a massive wick back into this and then Price couldn't maintain it and come back down. So now looking at the four hour, we can see obviously we've got the 23.6 fib um, from the high to the low, 23.6 fib, one hour 50 in May. If we go into one hour, you'll see quite clearly here. Rejected that, does it to reverse and back up, maybe test that one hour 50 in May again and then come back to the downside, which goes with our retracement on DXY and then further downside potential. Um, and of course, as we said about the Eurozone, possibly we're going to begin to struggle more this week. Um, next pair we're going to look at is New Zealand dollar CAD. So another CAD pair again. And um, like I said, just make sure to be careful and only take a couple of these um, when you're looking at this. So if we just look at the weekly, we can just see how price has gone over the last week. We can see that we did get a big bearish um, candle, a massive wick to the upside, massive wick. Uh, to the week prior, um, so that date at uh, weekly 50 MA broken through that 0 0.8328 support, 08 support, which you can see has been quite significant for price. Um, so, be interested to see if we can maintain it. So, going to the daily, we can just see um, obviously price did break through, made this new low, it's now come back up. And if we just adjust this slightly, um, we can just see um, on the four hour a little bit clearly. Uh, more clearly, uh, we can just see how sort of we rejected that 50%. Um, and I think the 78.6 prior to that, to be fair, um, sorry, not the 78.6, it might have been the 61.8. Sorry, um, sorry, yeah, the 61.8, you can see just rejected 
um, when it come through that 4 hour 50 main fakes out, then it sort of come back up, retested the 50 fear main, um, and now it's sort of coming back to the downside. Potentially just continuation on this one down to sort of the minus 27% at 0.78283. Um, and obviously that CAD strength that we spoke about before, so it goes with our Australian dollar CAD short as well. Um, next pair we're going to look at is USD CAD. So if we just uh, move this fib off of the weekly onto the daily, um, obviously in trading view to try and keep it clean. Um, sometimes you'll see that mine do seem to overlap, which can be quite annoying, um, but it's no problem at all. I'll try to change it before. Um, so obviously looking at this, we've had a massive impulse in the last few weeks. I think there's been like a thousand pip move. Uh, yeah, 1,100 pips um, to the upside, so a massive move to the upside, which obviously would do some correction. At the end of last week, we did see the price start to come back down with a 300 pip move to the downside. So we've gone to the daily, and um, we can just see... Um, obviously this evening star formation which wasn't completely fulfilled because we didn't quite get that bearish engulfing however it's still um, a signal that price could be looking to uh, reverse obviously as we said before the DXY is likely to retrace and oil um, is looking to correct so therefore um, if the DXY is retracing oils becoming bullish USD CAD correction is due um, and now if we just look onto the four hour we can see that um, we have actually broke a trend line so looking at our reversal um, we've got a fib um, we've got the 71% rejection um, and then of course we're looking at that one hour 50 in May if we go down and we see that one hour 50 in May is now broken um, with that bearish engulfing and now potentially see price move to downside and potentially even star formation there as well um, comes down to the minus 27% fib at 1.40408 um, so potentially going to make this new low there um obviously if we do break above that one hour 50 in may and obviously we do have that four hour 50 made down here so potentially see price come down between the zero and the minus 27 percent fib um and then of course going back to usd jpy um obviously i'll be looking for this to continue this week seeing on the weekly we can see um if I should get rid of some of these um you just see on the weekly how impulsive of a week we did have um so a massive impulse to the upside we can see in the last two weeks specifically um this massive change in momentum so we obviously made this low 101 um point 200 roughly um and now obviously sitting 110.785 sort of 900 pips um in the space of two weeks um so obviously now looking at it we can just see that price has broken above sort of previous highs broken through sort of three major areas of resistance um so now we're just looking on that um daily time frame we can see obviously my analysis from before sort of four hour high highs high lows being made potentially made a higher low here then a higher low and then potentially a higher high here um, so maybe another small correction if we go down to the one hour time frame we'll just see the 71 percent if we look in the ABCD, so A, B, C, D, potentially another sort of small correction to 23.6 and then up higher. My target is 112.136 um, and then potentially might go higher as well. Um, obviously, the momentum the US dollar's got could be massive on this move. So happily sitting at 550 pips um, in profit, risk-free, majority of profit taken. I've also got a scaling as well, which I think is running around 200 300 pips I think, um, so quite a nice trade there, um, and that's the importance of obviously quality over quantity, um, sometimes you just need one trade to make your week, and then a couple of scalings, and you'll happily have a nice pip count. Um, obviously that's everything from me guys, it's all my analysis by all means, if you're within the Slack community, make sure to message me there, um, and obviously if you're not within that Slack community yet, or you'd like to have a feel of some of the stuff that I work on within our community, then by all means drop me a message, um, and I'm sure we can discuss that in more detail. Um, and obviously just to finish the video, I just wanted to say obviously I hope everyone's doing well, I hope everyone's um, obviously coping okay with what's going on around us, um, obviously it's very important to stay safe, um, obviously self-isolate where possible and obviously help out anyone in need um, and obviously it's not a great time at the moment with a lot of people losing jobs and obviously the economy struggling but if anyone does want to try and learn a new skill just to keep them going um obviously put their time effectively then make sure to sort of drop me a message and i'll help in any way i can whether it's a phone call mentoring call maybe we can sort of have a private call um one-to-one -one, um and obviously i want to help in any way i can so obviously that's all for me guys hope to see you soon.